Okay, so um, hello everyone. I am Arnaud Loré. I'm a senior APR architect at Natixis. It's the French banking group. Uh, so as uh, Isabel told you, uh, I'm so known as the API and demand. You can follow me on Twitter or in my blog. I did not write uh, much post until recently because I was spending most of my free time uh, writing a book called The Design of Web APIs, which is obviously about the design of web APIs. Uh, hopefully it's over now. I can get back to a normal life and uh, you can Come to see me at uh, the next break. I have a few printed copies and some coupons for ebooks if you want. Uh, so, a part of my job at Natixis is helping people uh, design APIs. So, I'm working with different teams across different business lines on the creation and evolution of uh, dozens of APIs, mostly private ones. And I, I work with total beginners, more experienced people, and everything in between. In that context, I had to conduct quite a few API design reviews, and today with the API design review or status set, I would like to share with you um, a few things I've learned that I hope will help you when reviewing API designs, but also when designing APIs or building API governance. Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D, is a tabletop fantasy role-playing game. During a game, one of the participants acts as uh, the Dungeon Master, or DM. The DM is the game referee or, and the storyteller. The other participants play characters involved in the story created by the DM. There is no finite board in a D&D game. Players can virtually do anything they want. But sometimes the um, Dungeon Master may ask them to uh, throw dice to check Things. For example, uh, the players want to enter in a fortified city at night and they have to bribe some guide, some guards to enter. So the DM may ask them to uh, throw dice to do a persuasion check. When you do API review, you may also have to convince and persuade people. A question that usually needs to be answered is why do we need APIs on reviews? Even if it is said like, Oh yes, is that yet another useless process? It's a very good question. Why do we need to review API design when designing API is so simple? We have API guidelines, we are skill developers, functional experts. Let me tell you a story to explain that. Now that what follows is purely fictitious and has never ever happened in any other company I've been working with. Well, it may have happened, but not exactly like this. So, let me introduce you to Donan, the designer, and Rina, the reviewer. Names have been changed. Donan is a level 2 API designer, and Rina is a multi-class character, which is both a level 23 API designer and a level 5 API design reviewer. I will now reenact an API design review that never happened. <coughs> Greetings, Rina. Greetings, Donan. As you know, we need to add a post-send email operation to our API. This operation is so simple that we wonder why we need to review it with you. Well, this is for the good of our kingdom and its people. We would like to ensure that all of our APIs make sense, are free of design bugs, extensible, user-friendly. We also take advantage of this review to enhance our guidelines and develop people's API design skills. Rest assured that I am not the API Design Inquisition. I'm here to help you. Great, so what do you think about my API? From a pure form perspective, that looks quite good. You follow our guidelines most perfectly. Names like sender or recipient are quite clear. Required data are defined. You use HTTP protocol well. And you use our standard error messages. The only thing that you need to tweak is, to this is the send email path. Indeed, according to our guidelines, we do not use verb in path, only nouns. So in this, in this case, I'd suggest a post slash emails request that tells that you create an email. If it is not clear, uh, we can go through our guidelines to explain that point. By Moradin, that's good news. We'll do the modification and start coding. Wait. Form is not all. Your API scroll did not contain any information about why and how this new operation will be used. Can you tell me more? Oh, that's quite simple. 
When users modify their data on our mobile application, we need to notify them that their data has been modified, you know, for security. Okay, this looks like a low-level technical operation that will be called by your mobile backend, right? Not at all. Once the modify operation has been called by the mobile app, the mobile app called the new send email operation. So, if my understanding is correct, that means that the consumer is in charge of what seems to be purely internal security business logic, but, and that everyone getting access to the API could send an email with any content to anyone on our company's behalf. By Moradin, you're right. I'm glad we did this review. I need to rethink my plan. So this story is a good sample of why we need APIs and reviews. But this is only a sample. What could possibly go wrong when designing API? Well, almost everything. APIs can be inconsistent, non-conforming to guidelines, bugged, incomplete, non-user friendly, unsecure, and may even not fulfill the real needs. These are the most common reasons why we need APIs and reviews, and API design reviewers aim to help designers avoid them. This purely fictitious example gave us a, a glimpse of what happens during uh, an API design review. Let's see more by discovering four basic rules that should be followed when conducting an API design review. Rule number one, in a D&D game, what is important is not saving the kingdom from some evil sorcerer. No, what is important is the story the party will leave and what they will do to achieve this legendary victory. An API design review is not a one-stop journey. It must follow a complete life cycle in order to be efficient. An ideal API design review starts with an early review where the people in charge of the API can discuss with reviewer about their needs and their plan to fulfill them. The objective is not uh, to do a detailed review. Uh, what we need here is an overview of the context, the functional needs, and maybe some idea about the operations that will be needed and how they will be used. In our send email uh, use case, such early review would have quickly showed that the direction taken was not a good one. After this review, the API is actually designed, and its description and any other documentation is sent to the reviewer for the code review. At this stage, the reviewer works alone. The objective is to go through all aspects of the API in depth to spot possible errors, problems, or uncertainty. Such detailed analysis must never be done live. It requires concentration and time for thinking. The API designer uh, reviewer lists all questions and remarks and sends them to the API team in order to prepare the live review. If everything is perfect, uh, the review can end at this stage, obviously. During the live review, reviewer and designer go through all questions and remarks and agree on uh, the modifications to do or not to do on the design. Once it is done, the API description is updated and resent to the API reviewer for a final check. Uh, the review can also end here if uh, the contract is live updated and the modifications are simple. We want that sometime you will need more than one code life cycle. And also, uh, always explain the review process. If you don't do that, you may never see the API team again after your first meeting because they could think that they have everything they need. If you play uh, D&D, you know the importance of exploration. A party must check every corner of a dungeon to, to find all treasures, but also traps. When you review an API design, and especially during the code review, you also have to be the most exhaustive possible. Every aspect of the API must be scrutinized in order to be sure that everything is okay. You must ensure that the API makes sense for its user and is user-friendly. To, to do so, you must have a good view on the context, the targeted users, and the needs. That is mandatory to check if the API's purpose, its operations, the requested and provided data are actually the correct solution. You also have, to ch also have to check at every level that everything makes sense for anyone willing to use the API. That includes operation goals, operation flows, formats, data types, names, required and optional data in parameters, but also responses, error handling, and even descriptions. 
To check that the API conforms to your guidelines and is consistent, you also have to explore every level from operation to each property and everything in between. It's especially hard to uh, check that the each part of the API is consistent with all of the parts. Always double check for security aspects. Do the API deal with sensitive data? What the API is allows to do uh, is relevant regarding the targeted consumers. How the API is secured is adapted to the context using adequate uh, all flows and scopes, for example. Uh, do not forget uh, to check if there are any limitations impacting the design that has been forgotten. It could be because targeted users are on a hostile network environment, like mobile applications. They may have technical limitations, and there may be also technical limitations or functional ones on the implementation side. Rule number three, social interaction play an important role in a D&D &D game. It's the same for API design review. During early review and live review, you will have to make the API creators talk a lot. You'll have to ask questions, make comments, and carefully listen to what people say. That will help you to understand the context and the needs. It will also help you uh, identify vocabulary, data types, concepts, processes. Um, all these information are critical because you need them to evaluate if the design is accurate. Very important when you make people talk, you may have to guide them to focus on the higher perspective. During some early review, I've seen people directly starting by talking about a get slash this operation, which was retrieving data from some table without even explaining the context. If it's the case, stop them gently and ask them to explain the who's, the why's, and the how's from a functional perspective. And last rule, but not the least, you must adopt the right mindset to do API design review. If an API design reviewer was a DND character, its alignment would be neutral good. Let's see what it means. An API reviewer is supposed to explain and teach, absolutely not to shame without any arguments. Always explain your remarks by rephrasing your understanding of the needs or by reporting to guidelines or common practices or existing APIs. In order also to be able to do an accurate review, don't be too smart, try to impersonate consumers who are not experts in the field of the API. Always trust the API team about their functional knowledge. It's not your API, but theirs. You're only here to give an end. And last remark that you should carefully think about, uh, because depending on your context, you may not want to do it my way. I believe that as an API design reviewer, you should avoid doing the police and blocking projects. Sometimes, because of whatever reasons, the API team may not be able to uh, follow your recommendation. Just explain the consequences and let that judge if that is a problem. Of course, there is a balance to find in order to ensure an overall consistency in your company's API, but always let the team decide. D&D is a never-ending game, just like APIs and reviews, and you must be prepared and do all you can do in order to make that ongoing story as enjoyable as possible for everyone, including you. So we are four of the rules that you should follow when conducting many API design reviews. Rule number one, proper equipment can mean the difference between life and death in a dungeon or when doing API design reviews. So you better fill your toolbox. First, write API design guidelines, which describes how APIs should be designed in your organization. Without them, you can be sure that it will be really hard for you and all API designers to be consistent. Promote the use of machine-readable API description formats. For REST API, use the Open API specification. For Async APIs, use the Async API specification. And by the way, that means that all types of APIs have to be reviewed. Using machine-readable API description formats, you can write programs that will lint uh, your API design to check if the form match your guidelines, but not that such programs, such linters, are not enough to judge the quality of an API, but it's a great help. Um, I started to experimentally use a linter called a Stoplight Spectral, and I'm having quite good results and planning to uh, provide a linting as a service for all the team, uh, API team I'm working with. 
And not also that some API designers may not be really happy uh, having to write JSON or YAML files using an API description format, so try to find user-friendly design tools. Uh, you can give a try to Stoplight Studio, which is, in my opinion, the best option I've seen for now. I am not paid by Stoplight to say that they just make great tools. Um, rule number two, our memory is not reliable and not easily shared. So. Uh, a good dungeon master records every player's action to use them in later games. And as an API design reviewer, you must also record everything. Write down your reviews so you can share them with the API designers, but also other reviewers working with you. It will help you to check that all problems have been fixed. It will also help you in further analysis of uh, evolutions of already uh, reviewed APIs. Uh, I did not find any tools to do that, so I used a Google wiki. Uh, record all important decisions and why you took them. It could be local decisions, such as in a specific API, an account number is called a customer ID, because for whatever you want. But it also uh, could be global decisions, so these global decisions should be uh, written in your guidelines. Uh, for example, of global decision, it could be uh, how do we manage consumers who are not capable of doing patch HTTP requests. Don't love, uh, I had to deal with that a few weeks ago. And finally, store all your contracts in a contract repository so you can check later how an API has been, uh, have evolved and uh, if a new API is consistent with all existing ones. Rule number three, govern, but not too much. A good D&D Dungeon Master know when to apply rules strictly or loosely, just like a good API design reviewer. One of the objectives of making API design review is to ensure that APIs built by different teams are consistent. That makes them easier to use. Uh, don't think that means that all APIs should share a very strict and very uh, fine-grained design rules, very strict common schemas, it's not a good idea. Well, depending on the context, it may be a good idea, but in my opinion, you should uh, never govern like a dictator and use a loose governance based on high-level rules and friendly reviews. But it's up to you to find the right level of governance. Building a reviewer community uh, could be a good thing, especially if its members are actual designers. Such community could be good to ensure consistency and make the guidelines evolve smoothly. But if you come to the idea that all reviews should be done by some committee emerging from this community, it's a terrible idea, in my opinion. A single trained and trusted reviewer will be more efficient uh, to, do review, uh, to do a review sorry, than any committee. A committee may go into endless debates and lead to a, a rigid, time-consuming and counterproductive governance. But Again, depending on your context, the size and the mindset of your organization, that may work. I have never seen that. Uh, but if anyone does, uh, I would be happy to, uh, to talk about that. Rule number four, train and teach. Your job as a reviewer is not only to review API designs. Your job is making people better at designing APIs. So, I already said that during a review, you can teach people by explaining your remarks and your propositions, but you can do more. During early review, I check with the API team if they need my help to actually design the API. That way, they can learn to design API on a real use case that matters for them. With my team, we also plan to create an API design training course so people could uh, do it before doing some API projects. That way, we hope to preemptively ensure that people will design good APIs and so reduce the work on the reviews. Is it the end already? Is that all we can say about reviews? Of course not. A D&D game is absolutely boring if the dungeon master do all the work and all the players just sit there and do nothing. Reviewers do not work alone. API creators have to actively participate to API design reviews. And here are some rules uh, that teams creating APIs should follow in order to make reviews efficient. Rule number one, do not wait for the last minute before going into production to contact API design reviewers. We are not here to give you some kind of patch that you need to go into production. If you think that, do not bother to contact them, it would be better, but be ready to face the consequences. 
If it's quite simple to fix an API design before everything has been implemented, it may be far more complicated to change anything once everything has been developed or worse, put into production. Fixing bad designs sometimes may, may even need to totally rethink a solution's architecture. Bad design may also have serious consequences for your organization. Nobody may want to use your terrible API. But things can be even worse when security is involved. Remember the same email story at the beginning of his talk. So I repeat, API design reviewers are here to help you design APIs. The sooner you contact them, the better. Rule number two, on each step of the API design review lifecycle, participants must be prepared. API design reviewers must be able to get all the answers they need. So review participants must be able to describe the context, the needs, and how the API will fulfill them. That may mean that a developer, a business analyst, a product owner, and even possible consumers should be involved in the review process. If you provide documentation, please provide user-friendly documentation. Simple diagrams uh, explaining API code flows are great. You can use PlantUML to do that. But awfully long wiki pages describing every single uh, business rules it's not, uh, is not necessary. For the code review, please provide a fully documented API contract using the relevant API description format, not some Excel or Word files. Uh, in order to avoid everyone lose their time, please pre-check the interface contract using the guidelines or a linter provided by the reviewers. And finally, read the code reviews to prepare answers and fix what can be fixed before the live review. Rule number three, the last one, API creators like reviewers must adopt the right mindset. So during the review, please don't take it personally. API design reviewers can be annoying by asking many questions, challenging your design, but it's for your API is good. On your side, never hesitate to ask questions, never hesitate to challenge the API design reviewers. As a reviewer, I have learned a lot by being challenged by designers. And one last thing, never hesitate to propose your own solutions if the guidelines do not cover your use case or the proposed solution does not fit well. And we have gone through all the API design reviewer status set. I really hope that it will help you. Uh, if you ch uh, should remember just one thing. Remember that API design review make everyone grow. As an API design reviewer, if you do review, your API design skill will grow at light speed. But for designers, uh, when you uh, encounter an API design reviewer, reviewer first objective is obviously to ensure that APIs are flawless and so on, but the real objective is to really make uh, people grow their API design skills so in the end they will almost won't need reviewer anymore and they will be able to make others grow. Thank you.